All right, so it's time for us to take a look at the headlines of the National Dailies. We're taking a look at four this morning, and we we'll begin with a leadership newspaper. Leadership newspaper leads with APC may opt for consensus Senate president speaker. That is the leading headlines on the leadership newspaper. APC may opt for consensus Senate president speaker. Now, this is a major issue, Nyamgul, and I can't wait for us to join our analysts to take a look at this uh, very serious issue. You have on top of that, don't truncate Kanu suit against DSS court one parties. And then under you have Senate approves PMB's request for 22.7 trillion Naira loans. Another loans. And then you have LP crisis. We pardon Obi Dati for attending Abure's meeting. A papa. That you will find details of that on page seven. And that's the much I will take um. from the leadership newspaper. Okay, Daily Trust uh, is next, um, following up on uh, speakership of uh, uh, the House of Reps, I think. Opposition intensifies plot to upstage APC, uh, says we were more than prepared. Under that, we still have it's fruitless, it's a fruitless move, that's according to the Chief Whip, will abide by ruling party's decision, that's the tax force forum, and they can succeed, but... There's a but there, and that's from the analysts who are saying the opposition may succeed, but there's a but there. We're working on consensus, according to Adamu. That's still all under speakership opposition intensifying a, a plot to upstage APC. Then we have um, Ways and Means. Senate okays Buhari's 22.7 trillion Naira loan request. So Buhari is living in a matter of days, and um, he's still applying for loan, 22.7 trillion Naira loan. Um, okay, we also have Sudan crisis. Nigerian evacuees airlifted from Egypt without luggage. We hear that they have reached Nigeria. The first batch has arrived in Nigeria, but they were airlifted without their luggage. Um, Lagos Ogun Kano top as internet subscribers hit 15 or 154 million. Okay, and then Press Freedom D, IPI sets agenda for Tinubu's government. Uh, Buhari launches Nigeria Agenda 2050, targets over 150 million jobs. Okay. 150 million jobs from now till 2050. That will be all on Daily Trust, please. Okay, from the Daily Trust, we'll go over to the Punch newspaper. And the Punch newspaper is leading with outrage. Uh, Senate approves Buhari's 22.7 trillion naira extra budgetary spending. You find details of that on page two of the punch newspaper the writers there fresh burrowing from cbn illegal suspicious says neka lcci and economists you also have the second writer there 22.7 trillion naira extra budgetary spending to raise public debt to 69 trillion naira well the countdown you can see if you look closely 26 days to go the countdown has begun mm -hmm. <laughs> the countdown has begun so this administration has 22 days to vacate office and give room for the incoming government all right so on top of the punch newspaper you have picture of the foreign minister the Sud uh, onyema and it's titled sudan 376 stranded Nigerians airlifted from Egypt. Finally, we've gotten to this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, finally, we've gotten <laughs> to this point. But it's just 376 stranded Nigerians. And I was, I heard someone saying that we have over 5 million Nigerians in Sudan. 
you were saying Five. we were saying the other day that we're not sure mm. the number of Nigerians we have there. But I had someone um, saying, uh, a former diplomat for that matter, saying mm. that we have up to five million Nigerians in Sudan. In Sudan, what are they looking for in Sudan? Well, looking for greener pastures. How and green are the pastures <laughs> in Sudan? <laughs> Jeez. And the fact that we had all the imbroglio, all the confusion that took place in the course of getting our people out of there also raises lots of questions as to why did we have all of that? You have the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, mm. then you have uh, the Diaspora Ministry, the commission headed mm. by Honorable Abike Dabri, and then you have the ambassador, so the, and our embassy over there. Why did we have all of this? And then not mentioned forgetting NEMA. Mm. We have all of these, and did we need to have all of these at the same time? Those are questions <laughs> that uh, are begging for answers. So while well, details of that you find inside the Punch newspaper. And so following that, you have the federal government disconnect discos from national grid over debt. The federal government disconnects discos from the national grid over debt. You find details of that on page 10 of the Punch newspaper. And then you have strike. Resident doctors say... FG's threat annoying. Page seven is where you find details of that. And that's all I would take from the Punch newspaper. Okay, finally, we'll go to Daily Independent, uh, where the first and biggest story there is my government won't marginalize any region, Tinubu assures. Uh, we also have uh, another smaller headline NLC TUC disrupt operations at Lagos Abuja Airport over. IMO or IMO. Then Airpeace laments 110 flights interruptions and 400 million naira losses. You'll find that on page 7 of Daily Independent. Buhari unveils new national development plan, days to government ex exit. Uh, that's like uh, the one we said in the other newspaper. Uh, 2050 is the target and 150 million jobs also. Page 6 is where you'll find that. Senate case 22.7 trillion ways and means loan for Buhari. Federal government makes U-turn on directive for states to stay off federal roads. Set to refund Banu government 16.7 billion naira. Okay, which means maybe now the state governments can work on the federal roads. Um, but I don't know if they will have a refund because yesterday Tinubu was in... Uh, was it yesterday? He was in Port Harcourt to commission some of the roads in River State. Mm -hmm. And when the governor said, okay, I spent this XYZ amount of money to fix the roads. Um, do well to refund when you enter into office. And he said, I, I owe, owe you, you nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want your money, you can lobby me. So I was asking myself, if after lobbying you, the money can be paid, why not just go ahead and pay it? Uh, or is it that you're going to pay and it will not have budgetary allocations for that or something? I don't know. Is it from your pocket or something? These are questions I cannot answer. Maybe the experts will answer them for me. Mm -hmm. Sirica insists Nigeria is still feasible before May 29th. And this is 26 days to go. Let's see how that will pan out. Then uh, join our Papa orders and be booted out. LP wants officials. So now LP has become like a Sudan. We have, uh, <laughs> we have two factions fighting themselves. A Papa is on the one hand, a Bure is on the other hand. The other newspaper said, a Papa has forgiven Obi mm -hmm. for attending a Bure's the meeting. Almighty, a Papa. <laughs> so now, who is this Labour Party talking? We don't even know what faction that is. But that is on the news there. And under that, this own purported neck meeting held in Bauchi, and accuses judiciary of bias over its internal matters. That's still under the uh, Labour Party headline. Uh, opposition parties dare APC insist, insist rather on uh, producing Speaker and the Deputy. Raise under that raise eleven man committee to shop for credible popular candidates and then vow to remain indivisible, provide effective checks on ruling party. That's interesting. And I'm excited about that. If the opposition party can come together and produce the speaker or the Senate president, 
that will be something. It will be something because, because trust me, we need the opposition. Mm -hmm. we, we do not need a rubber stamp 10th assembly. We do not. We, we, we do not even want, in saying that we do not need a rubber stamp doesn't mean that we need one that will not allow government to work. Yeah, yeah. But there should be balance, there should be checks and balances. Uh, each, each of them, each of the arms of government should be able to independently perform their role so that government can function as it should. Mm. I, I believe that too. But um, let's leave that to um, the opinions of uh, our experts, who, uh, analysts who will be joining us here now. And uh, um, I do hope he's on standby. He is on yes. standby. Ezekiel Nya Etop is a public affairs analyst and is talking to us from Aquaibom State. Good morning and welcome to the show, sir. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be with you guys. Okay. How is Aquaibom today or are you in Lagos? No, I'm in Aquaibom and it's as cool and as peaceful as has always been. Lovely. You need to be here. Yeah. Amazing I, state. I Amazing. Asked I asked that question because the last time you were here on uh, Off the Press, you did mention that you might be traveling to Lagos to celebrate OB Ezekwesili. Um, oh, yeah. I, I can't even remember. Was it because uh, of her 60th birthday or it was Six because or was it be, because it was, she was uh, included in the list of the transition committee? Did I get you right? <laughs> Please don't let me go to certain areas because she turned 60 and the whole world was at a standstill. It was awesome. Oh. So I did go there and then a few other places, but I'm back because of our tribunal. So I'm actually talking to you from Uyo. Okay. All right. Let's start with this very serious matter of the outrage as Senate approves Buhari's 22.7 trillion extra budgetary spending. 26 days to go. Talk to us about this. How do you see this? You see, um, it, it's a topic that I think that every Nigerian has to come to understand that government is not their business, but our business. The president is about to leave office in the next 20 something days. He's left office. But you know, you are stuck with whatever decisions he took. You are stuck with it. Your children, the more, are stuck with it. So we don't have a problem with borrowing, but we have to ask ourselves how do we intend to refund, to repay? If you are borrowing for production, you expect that the business will... I mean, we are, I'm a, a private sector person. I've never accepted any public office, any paying public office. So I understand that you need money for you to... I mean, to real estate, I build estates. And I borrow. I borrow, you know, but, you know, I do my cost-benefit analysis and I show the repayment plan and I show how the circle will close. Except the loop closes, then there's a problem. So when you do that strategic analysis, I don't know why countries just keep lending money to us without, without caring about... Anyway, it's none of their business to care about us. They know that we have national assets that they would like to take. Uh -huh. There was a place I went to borrow money. You know, the property was worth close to half a billion, and I just took less than 50 million. And they couldn't be bothered. Any terms and conditions, they'll sign and give me because what they hold in trust is over 10, 15 times what I'm asking for. So we need to understand the mentality of the man who is lending is that he is not a, a, a you know a moralist. He's a businessman. He's a businessman. And so long as he has something to hold on to, he will give it to you. It is for us Nigerians to ask the Hello Network is um, trying to mess up with us <laughs> this morning. Uh, this has not happened before with uh, Ezekiel. Hello, can you hear us? No. Yeah. We seem to Hello, have lost Ezekiel. your audio. Think he's trying to no. reconnect. It's, it's a bit of a, a glitch. Maybe you'll have to go off and uh, reconnect so that we can get that uh, well. We can't hear you anymore. You're breaking. 22.7 trillion. Yeah, and 26 days to go. Yeah, what is the game plan? What is the plan for the 22.7 trillion? And what amount of inputs uh, did the incoming administration hello. have? Yeah, hello. 
please come back on. Continue from where you stopped. Hello, can you hear us? You were saying that those who are giving us this money are business people. Hello. All right, he, he's not can here. Hear? Ezekiel. Mr. Ito. Hello, can you? Can you hear us now? Please, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Let's continue from Please where you ahead. stopped. Let's wrap up that so because of time. Basically, it, it, what I was trying to say is that it is our responsibility as citizens to ask the questions because the burden is on our head at the end of the day. Few days, Mr. President is out. That's the first thing. The second thing is addressing Mr. President directly. I expect him, having been a former head of state and having been a president on two terms, to know how government works. He should understand that we don't run a party system of governance. This will shock many people. We run a person system of governance. As at today, take my, my state for instance, we've been governed by PDP all through. But you can't see a thread that runs through Governor Atta's administration, transiting to Governor Pabio's administration, transiting to Governor Udom's administration. Each person comes and they do their thing. Now, I can't quite compare that of APC because you can see that um, he is the first person, that's uh, President Mohamed Buhari. But if you go to PDP before, what is the nexus? What's the relationship? What is the party? Between uh, OBJ, from OBJ to Yaradua, from Yaradua to Good Lord Jonathan, you can't see a thread. So, and worse still, during the campaign season, you saw um, Bola uh, Ahmed Tinubu, you know, distancing himself from the current administration. Uh -huh. So why does the president think that whatever he's doing now, that the current person is going to continue with it? Wisdom demands, as far as I'm concerned, that you just wind down what you are doing. We are coming now to want to borrow about 29 tree or 22 trillion. But this if loan, you, though, uh, this loan sense. is from the CBN, isn't it? From wherever borrowing is borrowing. It doesn't make sense. Number two, you are launching a vision 2050. What makes you think that the incoming government is going to be interested in it? Because we don't do a party transition. We do a person transition and once this man comes, anything you did that does not go down with him, he will jettison it and do his own thing. So I believe that what Mr. President should have been doing a minimum of six months to his exit is what you call, you know, finishing strong, mm -hmm. tidying up, and not starting to bring out new programs, new projects, new borrowings. Those things, don't, they don't make It doesn't show me as a man who means well for this country. You find them or who suspicious. Has understanding of history you you or find somebody this borrowing suspicious. Them. You're suspicious of this. You find it quite uh, suspicious. Do you? Absolutely. Mopping Absolutely. up cash for something else. Okay. Uh, let me uh, combine two headlines here. They are the same anyway, uh, more or less. APC may opt for consensus Senate president, speaker. And then we have speakership, opposition intensifies plot to upstage APC. So here's APC not able to zone and then thinking about having a consensus uh, candidate to occupy the position. And then the opposition party, parties rather, are also coming together to upstage, upturn, or whatever it is, to unsettle uh, the APC and take up the speakership and even the Senate presidency. So your comments on that, please. Well, you know, it, it, I, I, there are many things I almost regret, but I try not to regret. One of them is I wish I was, I almost wish I was a member of APC because APC is in dire need of strategic thinkers. <laughs> they don't have this foresight. They don't, they don't see it coming. They don't preempt. They react. Instead of setting agenda, they kind of wait for it to be set and then they start to react. Common sense would have told you two things. Number one, you know, knowledge of the past, benefit of the past. We're at the time of, um, um, uh, not Lawan, before Lawan, 
Uh, Saraki. Yes, you saw what opposition did. So you have that benefit of, you know, past experience. Secondly, we have the most diverse house, you know, than ever, where you have, you know, Labour Party is there in the National Assembly, PDP is there, ADC is there, ABGA is there, uh, then APC itself is there, NNPP is there. If you had strategic thinkers, they would tell you, the House rule says that this person, like the Senate president or the speaker, must come from the majority party. Mm -hmm. That is different from must be presented or must be chosen by the majority. No, they are two different things. It means that the majority party can, in this case, let me be very specific, APC can say, we want Mr. A. And then PDP, PA, ADC, Labour, NNPP coming together can say we can bring out a minimum of, say, about 20, 30 people. So we look for a strong person in APC. When we look for a strong person in APC that we like, we tell him, can you get a minimum of this number of people from your party? All we need the numbers, we just need 30. Can you get 30 from your side? We will give you the others. And when we get to the floor, we'll make a majority. What that means is that they can actually choose who the next speaker or Senate president will be on behalf of APC and from APC, and it justifies the law. Now, what APC needed to have done was to understand that and early enough start to engage friendship with the opposition. Don't even wait for them to start talking. Start to say, you know, the way things are, we've got to be able to walk across the aisles. We need to walk with the opposition. We need to carry everybody along. Let your sound bite be along these lines of not wanting to threaten that we have the numbers. Because you really don't have the numbers. When push comes to shove, all you need is somebody from your side who is powerful enough to bring out 20 people, 30 people, add to these people, and he's a king. And... <laughs> There's a, anyway, let me not go there. So the bottom line is that we need to understand what the ground rules are. We need to know what the situation is. And we need to ask a, a, APC to be more strategic in the approach to things. That this grandstanding is old politics is no longer working. That's, that's, that's lazy mentality. They need to start to be a lot more proactive and a lot more, you know, you know inclusive in the approach and let their sound bites be a lot more entertaining, not entertaining, accommodating, that's a better word. Mm. All right, let's go forward to another headline, which is FG disconnects this skills from national grid over debt. That's on the Punch newspaper as well. On top of it there, you have FG disconnect this skills from the national grid. What do you make of that? I think that um, it would ordinarily make sense because you need money to be able to run the cycle. You know, there's the Genco's and there's the Disco's. Mm -hmm. Now, the Disco's are a lot uh, independent. The Genco's are much controlled by the government. It is only what is generated that you can now buy and distribute. And in the Disco's, which is the distribution arm, the way they operate is very suspect, you know, unless you get Nigerians to be properly metered. You'll always have where they have the estimated billings. If you can do estimated billing, whether you give light, you don't give light, they're going to collect money from the people. So why do you want to go and buy? Even the ones that you buy, you will tell them that, oh, people are not paying. As a result, you don't have money to pay back. There's this deceit where, you know, it's like, um, you know, I don't know the expression to use. There's a lot of insincerity, there's a lack, a lack of data, lack of transparency, lack of accountability. So no matter what the Genco's or the Disco's have brought in, they will always tell the Disco's that they, have, they don't have enough and they will always buy or, and borrow. And they, right now, the, the federal government is saying, look, we, 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 we can't keep, keep giving you, we are going to disconnect you. And I don't know who they are threatening. Are they threatening the discos or are they threatening Nigerians that they're not going to have the light again? 
I'm happy that there's been this um, law that Mr. President signed that states can have, have control over their power system. I think that with time, all those things are going to settle down. I believe, I hope that the new government coming in will have specific plans for power so that we, if each state is able to take care of their needs, then this question of discos, jenkos will just um, become a thing of the past. Okay. The um, Minister of Aviation has said, Sirika, he, he insists that Nigeria Air is still feasible before May 29th. What's your, your take on that's, that? That's a very, pardon my language, irresponsible statement for a minister to make. That's the sort of statement I should make. Because I'm an outsider, I say it's still feasible. A minister should make authoritative statement. It will take off on so 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 date. And if it is in the court, you should be able to know what the terms and conditions are, if they can meet it or if they cannot meet it. You should come to Nigerians and give us information that will make us to know where we are. Don't come tell me, oh, it is still feasible and all that. What's that so? So what do you want me to do with that? I should be optimistic or I should be happy or I should be sad. I expected him to say, this is the situation. This is what we've done. On account of it, it will be possible. We are doing this. And then we start, and what it is all about, how is it going to be different from Ibom Air or Arik Air or, uh, you know, AAPs? How is it going to be different? Those are the things we really want to hear at this point in time, as he's packing his bags and leaving. And not be telling me that it is still feasible. Let's hope. Let's pray. He should have even gone. Let's pray. Because everything in Nigeria is, has become very <laughs> we spiritualized. We've a lot here, don't we? All right, let's go to the next headline, and that's also from the Daily Independent. NLC TUC disrupt operations at Lagos Abuja airports over Emo. And uh, the writer there, Airpiece, laments 110 flight disruptions and 400 million Naira loss. How do you respond to these disruptions that took place, uh, orchestrated by the NLC and the TUC? You see, once you bring in labor, and um, you know, oh, sorry, uh, my, my, my cap is a little far away. I would have put it on. I, <laughs> you know, during the labor day, I was, uh, as it were, decorated by the president himself, and then um, I was fully kitted. And one of the programs, I was there in my full regalia, you know. So right now, I have got to be on the side of the comrades, you know. Mm. <laughs> so labor, comrade. the Bible is very clear. A workman is worthy of his wages. Mm. Let the labor, you know, the workers, Nigerians, Nigerian workers, have what is due them. And then um, we, we that are outside need to also join them in putting pressures because uh, inside, there are certain things I tell them that is not, I will not want to say outside here because, I mean... You know, a lot of times you are like the frog. You make the rain and the rain falls on you. So it's a two-way thing. But generally, I would like to say that whatever is due the workers, they should be given to them so that they can allow the system to run. If not so, uh, they should use every possible legal means to make sure that they press for their rights. So once in a while, if they need to uh, disrupt the system to call attention, I think so long as they do it within the ambit of the law, it should be allowed. Mm. Okay, I, I don't know where we should just no, wrap up. We, or, we still have a few minutes. I want okay. him to touch on uh, what's going on in LP. What are your thoughts on what's going on in LP? The Papa faction and the main party. Yeah, and the Abure faction. Yes. <laughs> yeah. it, it, there's nothing going on in LP. It is, in my personal opinion, APC trying to be smart by half. <laughs> So, and you know, in party politics, you use the direct and indirect methods. You realize that during election, we have 18 political parties in Akwaibom. PDP can decide to sponsor parties by a candidate in as much as 15 out of the 18. You know, they just go there to make sure that they seal the spaces and some very good people don't come. Party politics is a very complex politics. That's why when people start to analyze from outside, they don't know what goes on inside. They really don't understand how these things work. They analyze in ignorance. Party politics is a two-way thing. While I am progressing, I'm making sure that you are retrogressing. So it's a two-armed thing. 
one arm you are climbing, the second arm you are pressing the people down. You see, labor has to be given this fragmented, you know, image. They have labor has a strong case in the in this tribunal. Though. They get strong case, very strong case. And if the judiciary sits up and they do their work, there may be consequences that um, the nation might be might have to brace up to and just know that it can go left, it can go right. And any which way it goes, let's be based on justice, let it be based on equity, so that we will know that. That's why I want the tribunal to be, to be made public, let people see it, so that when their final decision is taken, if it goes to the way of APC, people will see that, okay, it makes sense, okay, next time, he, you know. But if it goes the way of PDP, People can see that it is honest, it is straight, and we're like, okay, no problem. If it goes the way of Labour Party, people will see it, that they don't need to be told. There won't be a system shock. They've been following it. As a matter of fact, they have actually seen the end from the beginning. So when the final result is given, there's no system shock. Let us just open up ourselves. So in the light of that, PDP, APC has to be a lot, like, a few steps ahead by making... Um, a labor to be fragmented. This is my, my, my conspiracy theory, Thank please. You. My very personal opinion. Thank so, so that's why they are helping to fuel the faction because if not so, Labour Party that has a man like Peter will be, we're not going into election. We'll just finish the election. So the first thing would be you know, coming together to see how they can make their case better. So anybody who wants to factionalize labor at this point is a fifth columnist, is a saint, is a is not is not a labor member. Thank you so okay. much, Mr. Ezekiel <laughs> Nya Etok, for all your time and insights. He's a public affairs analyst who's joined us from Akwaibom State on Off the Press this morning as we took a look at the headlines on some major newspapers on the breakfast this morning. So just thank you, Mr. Nya Etok, and we hope to see you again soon. I thank you too. Thanks and God bless you. We'll be back with our hot topics. Don't go away.